So now we're going to begin to go through some really specific navigational tools that you can use on your interface. And first up, we have tabs. Now tabs are a great navigational choice for large applications because they're so intuitive. Anyone can look at a tabbed interface and just understand right away how it works. They're really obvious and hard to miss. And they also suggest this physical space by creating the illusion that the active tab is being, being brought up to the forefront. So you can see here in our example, the active tab is white and it's clear that it's active on the screen. The tabs two and three, um, they're clickable, but they're not currently active because they're a little bit grayed out. And the fourth one takes that metaphor sort of to the extreme and pushes that inactive or disabled tab way, way to the back. Now keep in mind that tabs also work vertically. So again, if your horizontal space doesn't work for them to fit across the screen, try a vertical tab system. So now we have drop down menus and we see these used really often with Ignition projects. And that's probably because the space is really limited in our HMIs um, and it's a limited commodity. So these actually suffer from a lot of usability problems and we really don't recommend them for use. And those problems are that a user must seek them out um, and they're really difficult to scan because you have to click into them to sort of understand what the options are in the list. So on the right here, we have our two images, which is kind of the before on the top and the bottom on the after. And you can see that we've taken this drop down or select list and converted it into a tab system. And this allows our users to see all the options at once which uh, is great for your users' uh, situational awareness. Now, drop-down menus can be effective sometimes, like for alphabetized lists, like states or countries, um, but really only in places like that where your user already understands what all the options are and doesn't have to think about them. And another example of refining a drop-down menu into something else that works a little bit better is what we recently did for the inductive automation integrator search. So our old search on the left here uh, used a series of dropdowns for navigating through a list of 50 plus items. It was a real usability problem, which we needed to address. So our new search on the right uses a Google Maps API to match results to a typed in location. So this is a benefit because the user here can use any uh, type of input that they have in mind to get to where they need to go. So it accepts things like address, zip code, city, state, country, really anything that they are thinking of. So let's talk about file trees for a second here. The file tree is another of these classic components which we see being frequently used for navigation today. So in general, they can be used for uh, larger desktop focused applications, but we really don't recommend these for anything that's gonna need to be touch or mobile friendly. And that's because these little arrow icons are really tough and tiny uh, touch points, which can be difficult to click even with the mouse sometimes. Now they do work really well for actual file paths like we're showing here with tag paths and ignition. But, using, but again, using them for a primary navigation pattern is generally discouraged because they're faced with these usability problems. And it's similar to the select list or drop down menu to where you just sort of can't see all the options that are present in there at once. And we talked earlier about information architecture being all about wayfinding. So just like every street corner needs a name, every screen on your project is going to need one as well. And your page name should be in the right place, be prominent, and match your user's expectations. And so your users are going to expect to see a page name at the top of your content. That's the right place for it. And in addition to being in that right place, they should be large enough to be instantly recognized as the heading or title of a page. People shouldn't be guessing if these are labels or page names, it should be clear. And finally, what we mean by matching user expectations is just that if I click a, uh, a link on a previous page, like in our images here that says Amber Logger, I would expect to then be taken on my next screen to a page that's titled as Amber Logger. So we just wanna be clear about where we're going and meet those users' expectations. Now let's talk about breadcrumbs. Uh, breadcrumbs tell a user where they are now and give context to where they've come from. Uh, they provide links which bring you back up to the top level of an application, sort of one step at a time. And breadcrumbs work really well when they're used alongside other navigational tools that we've talked about today, but not so great on their own. So like in our example here, you wouldn't wanna use a breadcrumb as both a navigational tool and the page title. You'd wanna use it in conjunction with the page title. Now that leads to a little bit of repetition, but that's okay because it really boosts the usability of your application. 
And when it comes to placement on the screen, uh, the user really expects these to be at the top of the content and pretty small. So just keep that in mind when you're building your designs. Next, we have the back button, which is another element that we've all been trained to use through our internet browsing, and we've really come to expect it in our interfaces. A back button will present us with a dead simple decision of do I want to go back or not? So they're really easy to use. And they're especially useful in these really deep navigational structures that we mentioned at the beginning, uh, where you might need to jump up quickly back between a few levels. 